the root of David. He is the bright. And the morning star, the prince of peace, the alpha and the omega. Walking in sunlight. Yeah, yeah. All of my journey. Oh, over the mountain. Oh, over the mountain. Jesus has said I Well the Lord said I'm never, never leaving Oh thee. Lord that's a promise Divine word It's a promise that never, never can fail Oh oh heavenly heavenly sun Y'all want to look like to do Oh heavenly sun Solomon says In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 And verse 1 there is an appointed time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot one what is planted. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. I need you to understand this morning, if you needed a text, a title, a topic, a sermonic theme, it would simply be time. Somebody shout time. Somebody shout time. Time is a very unusual thing to try to explain. Very difficult to try to explain time. I'm going to try my best, but time is a um, process or a period that is measurable and measured that consists of actions, uh, conditions, and it capsulizes our existential human realities. Time is calculated by minutes, seconds, hours, weeks, days, months, years, decades, uh, centuries, millenniums, that's time. It's, it's, it encompasses the past, the present, and the future. That is time. Somebody shout time. I need you to understand that we need to really study time. Why are you telling us this today, preacher? Because we as a family at this church, we as a spiritual body here at Grace View, need to understand time. Because the people of God at one point wasted their time. The people of God were miraculously delivered by God through the Red Sea by the leader by the name of Moses. Somebody shout Moses. They had been shown time and time again that God was for his people. But after they were miraculously delivered by God. They end up wasting their time. God told his people that in order to keep his promise, he was going to give them a land that was flowing with milk and honey, the promised land. But when God told them to go get it and they faced their enemies, even after God had said, since this land is for you, I am going to help you fight your battles. They made a cardinal mistake. As a matter of fact, their leader made a mistake. The leader Moses allowed them to spy out the land. And as a result of Moses being satisfied with placing the leaders of the tribes of Israel to spy out the land, they came back with an unfavorable report. At least 10 of them did. But if God already said that the land is yours, there is no need to have nobody go and check it out. 
because it doesn't matter who is over there. God is going to fight your battles. And when you have faithlessness and faithless people that place uh, the, the power in human people, instead of placing the power in God, they saw how big the people were in the promised land. They saw that the land was fruitful and it possessed all that God said. But when they saw the physicality of the people in that land, they got scared and fearful and they trusted in the inability of their human might instead of trusting in the God that had already been delivering them time and time and time again. So, beloved, why are you telling me this? Because we're studying time. For my Bible tells me in Deuteronomy chapter number one and verse number two that the Israelites, it had, they had an 11-day journey from Horab, which is uh, the Sinai Peninsula. It's a mountain also referred to as Mount Sinai, they had an 11-day journey from Sinai or Horeb to Kadesh Barnea, which is the line of demarcation that one would have to go through to get to the land of Canaan, which is the promised land. That was 11 days. It took them approximately... 14,600 days, which is the equivalent of 40 years, when it only should have taken 11 days, it took them 14,600 days, and they still didn't get there. That's 40 years. Now, it took them 350,400 hours wandering. That's the equivalent of 40 years. It took them approximately 21 million and 24,000 minutes wandering in the wilderness. What are they doing, church? They're wasting their time. Time is something that we cannot waste. Am I right about it? When you understand that time is on a continual process, it keeps moving. That's why I tell people, um, you need not be excited about the new year because the only thing about the new year is changing is time. Let me, let, let me make sure you get this. I'm not saying don't be excited. I'm saying be excited, but do not be excited if you just think because there's a new year coming that things are going to be different. The only thing that changes when God ushers us into 2018 is that we need to understand that time has changed. But nothing will change in your personal life until you make a mental change. Am I right about it? So you need not be excited if you hadn't decided or had a determined mind to make a change. Otherwise, the same thing that happened in 2017 will happen to you in 2018. And all you will be doing is doing just like the Israelites and wasting time. Could you imagine 40 years, 40 years going in circles, wasting time? time because of unbelief and a failure to trust uh, in God, even though God had already gave them the evidence by delivering them from the power of Pharaoh in Egypt. They had that experience. He had on a number of occasions uh, allowed water to come out of a rock. That's miraculous too. Amen. God had fed them with quail and manna from heaven that they didn't even know about. He allowed water to come out of rock. He was with them by cloud uh, at night and fi fire at night and cloud by day to God. Then they helped them understand where to go but when it came down to going and getting what God had for them they failed to trust God and have faith 
sad occasion where time is being wasted. A lot of sisters can't get a man because all some of the men are, are doing time. Y'all smile this morning. Uh, and, and, and some of y'all are looking at your watches right now because they want the preacher to preach in less time. Amen, <laughs> somebody. And, and their, their, their spouses, they want their spouse to spend more. Come on in here, somebody. And we need to understand that there's a value of understanding and processing in our minds time. Listen, you only get one life. And time is not like uh, money. See, when you run out, if you don't have none, somebody else can put some in your account. Y'all smile this morning. Uh, 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 listen, life ain't like that. Once your life is over, it's over. So the question is, here at Graceview, beloved family, with all the love in my heart that God will give me to make this statement to you, we as a body of believers need to make sure that we don't spend all of this time wasting it. There are congregations in the body of Christ that stay at the same mountain. They stay at the same place. And can I tell you that God has shown us, given us evidence time and time again that he is looking out for our best interests. But if you have a group of faithless people who don't trust God to take you to a higher level, you will be at the same place for 40 years. And this is just not in the church. This is in job situations, relationships. I wish I can get a witness this morning. This is in every area in your life. You have to evaluate and process time. Sometimes we don't appreciate time. So God wants us to faithfully utilize our time as we trust him. What does God want? He wants us to faithfully. Somebody shout faithfully. He wants us to faithfully utilize our time. Have you ever just been at home sitting there? Y'all, y'all can be, y'all can be real with me on this morning. Somebody call you, what you doing? Nothing. What? <laughs> now I'm all for getting rest. I mean, I know, I know how you, I'm tired sometimes too. Amen, somebody. But, 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 but is that an appropriate way to, listen, my mind, see, that, the thing about your mind is it never stops. You can be asleep, your mind's still going. Anybody had any dreams, any visions, anything like that in your sleep before? Amen, somebody. Your mind never stops. See, my mind never stops. So I'm always thinking about ways that I could be innovative. I'm always thinking about new ideas. How could I preach a sermon better? I'll listen to my same sermon and critique myself and see how, if I were to preach this again, how could I do it better? Could I explain it in a better way? Could I give you a better illustration? It's all about it. Use, utilizing your time. And I, I don't know about you. I want some stuff out of life. I want some stuff out of life. You know what? I would love for us to bust out of this building. Amen, somebody. And build a new building. But we need people that are on the same page and know that you have a divine destiny in your life. And all of us here are here for a reason. God save you so that you can become a member of the kingdom and a child of God. And he could utilize your time to help save somebody else. Now, we have different roles in the kingdom. But ultimately, we have the same goal. The question is, are you effectively and spiritually utilizing your time? So many young folk are wasting their time smoking weed, getting high, getting all oh, that's just a waste of time. Arguing with the same two people who never going to repent is just a waste worrying about your problems when you can do nothing to help yourself it's just a waste of time so i don't know about you but i'm 38 years old but i have enough sense to know that while i on i am on the time side of life it's all about using your time wisely that's prudent. That's wisdom. Utilizing your time. John the Baptist only had 30 years. Jesus only had 33 years. Jesus only had uh, 33 and a half years. But what he did with his time, he utilized it for the kingdom. See, you don't know how much time you have. So if you see 
that scripturally that we have some people of God that had a leader that made a cardinal mistake when he disobeyed God and he allowed the people his frustration with the people to block him from obeying God's uh, wisdom. He did not do the right thing and he messed up because that uh, allowed his time to run out. God says, Moses, since you did not speak to the rock and you struck the right in your frustration because of the rebellion, my people, I'm not going to punish them. I'm going to allow that water to come out of that rock. I'm going to allow my people to have uh, some water to drink for, for their beasts and their wives and their children. But Moses, you will not see in, in enter into the promised land and lead your people. Yeah. Now, let me tell you what's so frightening, and I'm going to encourage you in just a moment, but I just want to make sure I get this in your, in your spirit. Um, all of the people who God was frustrated with, because this is what God said. Okay. I want you to go to the promised land, and I want you to fight. Somebody shout fight. You know what I noticed, Brother Kleeman? Whatever it is that you're good at, and whatever it is that you are gifted to do, it sometimes doesn't come easy to do it. You still got to fight. If Michael Jordan, even though he was uh, by most the best player that ever lived, he had to fight to be that good. He had to be in the gym. He had to be taking you uh, taking uh, uh, weightlifting training and uh, shooting jump shots and working on his agilities. He had to train. You have to fight to be good and gifted, even when you're already gifted. So you have to fight. See, the people of God had the possession, but when they they, they were they were unwilling to fight, and then God was so angry at uh, Israel because they wouldn't go fight. And then when they realized that uh, when God had to tell Moses, tell my people, you know what? All of you are going to die. Amen. Now, here's what's interesting about that. You would have thought God would have killed them off immediately. But he let them wander <laughs> for 40 years. And I wondered to myself as I was reading that, why didn't God just go ahead and just exterminate them? He let them wander in circles. Now, I believe he did that. So that we could be studying this today. Y'all smile this morning. Amen. He said, I'm going to make an example out y'all. I'm going to let y'all just wonder. And here's a, here's a crazy thing about it. He still provided for them. Amen. Yeah. He prov I just, uh, you just read verse 7. He provided for them. Even what they had done. See, someone, I don't want you to misread that. Even though they did what they did, he still was with them. And he was still their God. But he was frustrated and angry. So I think God allowed them to wander for 40 years because he wanted us to learn something. I did a study for you to help you understand the value of trusting God when God has given you evidence. And I even thought about why did God allow them to uh, wander for 40 years? There's a significance of the number 40. In Genesis 7, 4, God sent rain when the flood came for 40 years days and 40 nights in exodus chapter 24 in verse number 18 moses was on the, on the mountaintop with god for 40 days and 40 nights in numbers chapter 14 verse 34 the israelites spied out the land for 40 days and then i got my answer the israelites spied out the land for 40 days so god gave them a year for each day that they spot out the land in unbelief. Numbers chapter 14 and verse number 34. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 10. The Bible says that, that Moses uh, stayed on the mountain for 40 days. Jonah in Jonah 3, 4 cried out to, the, to Nineveh that God would overthrow Nineveh in 40 days. Jesus fasted. In his testing for 40 days in Matthew 4 and 40 nights. There's a significant significance to the number 40. Somebody shout 40. 40 represents testing and trials. 40 in the Bible represents testing and trials for 40 days they spied out the land 
God says, because of your unbelief, I am going to allow you to wander for 40 years and go in circles. Because they didn't trust in God. I thought to myself, beloved, what if God can condition our hearts to effectively utilize our time as we sojourn on this earth and to do all that we can for the kingdom, love all the people that we could love, help all the people that we could help, visit the elderly, uh, go check up on the widows and the widowers, and make a deposit in the lives and investment in children, and do all we can in, the, in terms of evangelism. What if we utilize, as a, I'm talking about us in here, because I can't go no further than you are willing to go. And you can't go no further than what the collective body of us is willing to go. Now, let me just tell you this. Y'all take a deep breath. Brother Jones interested in going somewhere, y'all. All right. Y'all smile this morning. <laughs> I'm interested in going some, somewhere. I'm not one of those dudes that want to sit around and want to waste time. Wow. I want to go and get a Bible study. I want to go somewhere and preach a sermon. I want to go to a nursing home. I want to go and visit with somebody who's sick. I want to do something with my time. And if we can get everybody on the same page with effectively, spiritually utilizing your time, God going to bless us. I say God is going to bless us. Amen, somebody. Uh, we just need some people who understand time. So God wants us to faithfully utilize our time as we trust in him. Now, the question is, how do we do that? Number one is I faithfully utilize my time when my heart is receptive. Let's say that together. When my heart is receptive. How do you faithfully utilize your time, Brother Jones? When my heart is receptive. Turn with me to Psalm chapter number 95. Psalm 95. I told you earlier to put something there. Psalm 95 here. And I want to show you something. You will faithfully utilize your time when your heart is receptive to God. Amen. Psalm. I wish I had time to read the whole thing, uh, but I need you to know uh, that it's beautiful. It's only a few verses uh, in Psalm 95, but we get an illustration of what the Hebrew writer was uh, writing in Hebrews 3, which we'll go there shortly. Uh, and the Hebrew writer in Hebrews 3 referred to Psalm 95. And I want you to read that Psalm 95 in Hebrews 3 and Deuteronomy chapter 1 and 2 are all connected. Notice what the Bible says here in verse number, uh, let's go back up to verse number 6. This is so good. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 95 verse 6 says, come, let us worship and bow down. That's some good preaching right through there. Let us kneel before our Lord, our maker. That's the mindset, church, that we need to have when we enter into the house of worship. Verse 7, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, somebody shout today. If you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah. I preached a sermon on that before the waters of Meribah. As in the days of Massa in the wilderness. He says when, watch this, notice the time that he, you, uh, he uh, references. Now notice the time here, you can miss this. He says today. My question is when, psalmist, <laughs> Today. So he tells you the time in which you should respond to the adjoining passage. He says, today, you don't have to question when. It doesn't mean today does not mean tomorrow. Today does not mean next year, to, which is actually next year, praise the mighty name of Jesus. But today means right now. Somebody shout right now. Right now. All right, you in the house. He says, today, if you would hear his voice. See, the problem is that some of us are stuck in our personal beliefs 
our personal wants and how we want to behave personally that even when we hear the voice of God ringing out in our ears through the scriptures to, to sometimes we don't have a made up mind to be have a receptive heart to what God is speaking through his voice so the problem is our hearts are not right sometimes when we hear the voice of God ringing out in our ears through the scriptures. So he says, since you may have a hard heart, he says, today, if you would hear his voice, which is what you need to do every time I preach, hear the voice of God. He says, here's the instruction, do not harden your heart. See, when you hear the voice of God, there's a decision in your heart that needs to be made. Whether or not you're going to be receptive, somebody shout receptive. Oh, I'm preaching, Brother Jones. I'm teaching this morning. Whether you're going to be receptive or you're going to have a hard heart. So you could come in here and hear the message and leave here unchanged. Well, how can that happen when you heard the message? I hear parents all throughout my ministry. Parents have complained to me. Uh, because they say, well, I brought them to church. I thought they, you know, were going to be good and come up right. You don't know whether or not they were receptive when they heard the voice of God. So you can expose somebody to the truth. But if they do not have a receptive heart, they will not hear the voice of God. So the psalmist said today, he's given us an indication of time. He says when to do it, he says today, if you hear God's voice, here's the instructions. Do not harden. Don't you harden your heart. Then he gives an example. Notice what he says. As in the day of Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers, watch this. This came up in the Bible class this morning. Um, when your fathers in verse number nine. When your fathers tested me, God says they tried me, though they had seen my work. For 40 years, I loathed that generation and said they are a people who err, where, psalmist, in their heart. And they do not know my ways. Therefore, I swore in my anger. Truly, they should not enter into my rest. God says that my people, even though I did all that for him, for them, did not have a receptive heart. They erred in their hearts. So when you come to the house of worship with all the love that God will give me to teach you and express to you the scriptures here. When you come to the house of Lord, it's not to be entertained. It's not to have a feeling. Uh, it's, it's about the people. It's about the fellowship. Absolutely. It's about the people that we come when we come to the house of the Lord. But the main thing is, is when you come to the house of, of the Lord, are you looking for a word from God? Are you coming with the express intent that God has a message for me to do and he is going to allow that message to come through the teaching of his word through the preacher we at the grace Few church of christ want to thank you for listening if the passion for christ television broadcast has blessed your life this morning and you would like to donate you can go online to www.graceviewcoc.com Click on the donate tab and you can make your tax deductible donation to this broadcast. God bless you and tune in next week. You might have brought some trials. You might have brought some tribulations here this morning. You might be a little weary, but I came to tell you, Jesus. Yes, He does. Lord, in prayer, then we can truly, we can truly. Oh, I still believe there's something.
somebody in here to need Jesus. He's waiting on you with his hands outstretched. Come on, Tom, this morning. Oh, it's time to worship.